Welcome back. You're watching The Globe. The South African Tuberculosis Conference opened up by addressing head-on the withdrawal of key health role players from this year's conference. The conference, which is currently underway in Durban, has seen the World Health Organization, the Bill and Belinda Gates Foundation, and the FIND organization all pulling out of the annual event. This follows allegations that one of the conference's main sponsors had previously accepted money to do a study for the tobacco industry. Despite TB being preventable in, and curable, it remains among the top most highly infectious diseases worldwide. Jade Pulser has more. The conference started off with noticeably empty chairs. The allegations surfaced days before the event, resulting in tensions, confusion, and the untimely withdrawal of some delegates. The issue is centered around one of the conference main sponsors, whom allegedly had previously accepted money in 2021 to do a study for the tobacco industry, a move that the conference believes could have potentially derailed the event this year. About 12 days ago, we heard from the World Health Organization speaker that it could not attend anymore because, and these were the words in the email from him, the, uh, the conference organizers, FPD, is funded by the tobacco industry. This was a complete uh, surprise to us, and, and we then uh, found out, uh, tried to get more information, and it turns out that FPD has, has received a small amount of funding uh, to do a study looking at the interaction of cigarette smoking and uh, COVID-19 from a, a, a foundation that is called the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World. Long story short, it turns out that this foundation is a, a smokescreen, sorry to use that word, perhaps I should say front, <laughs> of, of the tobacco industry. Experts say that the COVID-19 pandemic has put the treatment of TB on the back foot. Reduced access to TB diagnosis and treatment has resulted in an increase in TB deaths and globally a notable spike of infections. Over 25,000 people die from tuberculosis each year in South Africa. Statistics are really showing that we have, while we have done relatively well uh, post, before COVID, during COVID, globally we have seen an increase in number of deaths uh, of, on TB and we wish to actually change that situation. This must stop. Calls from some civic organizations for more of a collective approach by organizations in combating the prevalence of TB in communities as opposed to some working in silos. We need to encourage all partners, particularly those who work in SANEC and in other spaces, to invest in TB and take initiative in ensuring that we prioritize TB in all levels, not just at national level, but we want to see TB interventions that are led at provincial levels, at district level, and most importantly, at local levels. South Africa has been rated by the World Health Organization as one of the 30 countries accounting to 86% of the global TB burden. The four-day conference will see over 1,500 delegates consisting of policymakers, scientists, civil society groups and health professionals convening to come up with strategic ways to fight TB. Jay Pulser, SABC News, Durban. Well, for more on this, we're now joined uh, via Zoom by Professor Salome Sharambulis, who is the Chief Scientific Officer at the Aram Institute. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the programme. Hi, Peter. Um, thank you very much for having me. It, it must be disappointing that your conference would start under a cloud of monies coming from the tobacco industry. Yes, no, it was, it was disappointing. Um, I think it was, it's been a difficult last two weeks. Um, but we as a conference organizing committee made the decision that it was more important to go ahead with the conference. It's really a very important conference for us as a country. 
Um, after having two years where their focus has really been on COVID-19, and this has seen um, a rapid decline in TB testing, and we feel a lot of setbacks for the TB response to the country. And so we're finally getting ourselves up and running again, and um, we have a TB response for COVID-19 and are planning on a national TB strategic plan and um, this was very important that we still went ahead with the conference um, with the stakeholders that are still able to participate, which is a very large number. And so um, we made a decision uh, that was a unanimous decision to go ahead. All right. So last question on this, because I think there are more important things to talk about. But um, I, I suppose that... Um, Yes, it's politically, it's just one of those things, uh, hot potatoes, tobacco money is a no-no. But could these uh, stakeholders, could, have, uh, could they have perhaps looked at the greater good in that the, the people with TB, uh, suffering from TB and might get TB, are much more important than some of these political questions? Well, I think that um, many of these organisations um, have rules, and they, uh, they, you know, they they hold themselves to those rules and abide by those rules. Mm. So we understood the reasons for their decisions, but at the same time, we felt um, that on our side, uh, many of the organisations in South Africa were still going to support the conference and have supported the conference, and so we decided to go ahead. Um, that was how we saw it. All right, so what's big on the agenda at uh, conference this year? Yeah, I mean, we have so many interesting um, parts of um, TB that, that are coming up. Um, we have, um, firstly, our TB response strategy, which is looking at many innovative tools that have, some of them have come out of the COVID um, ep epidemic, and we're hoping to use them in our TB response. In addition, there are new strategies for finding TB cases. There are now shorter regimens for TB treatment. There are shorter regimens for drug-resistant TB treatment. There are um, improved ways of working with healthcare workers. So all these different aspects um, we're hoping to discuss during this conference. And we're hoping that uh, those are going to be taken back to the communities and to the clinics and implemented. And that's really our big thrust is to ensure that all the new technologies and new um, innovative uh, strategies are now implemented throughout the country to be able to improve our response to TB and save uh, people of TB disease and the devastating impact that that has on people's lives. So where are we in terms of, I won't say post-COVID, but certainly at a recovery process from COVID because there were concerns and reports that um, HIV, TB and other uh, uh, um, diseases and combating other diseases was badly affected by the pandemic and that people weren't taking their medication, they weren't get receiving the help that they needed. Where are we on that journey af after the worst part, if I can say that, of COVID-19? Yes, um, you know, during the 2010, 2020 was really the really uh, devastating impact um, of uh, COVID on TB. So we saw the TB uh, testing reduced by almost to 40% of what it had been previously um, during the months from March to October 2020. Um, in 2021, we attempted to recover. We still did not really achieve the previous levels before COVID, but now in 2022, we really are seeing some promising impacts. Um, Dr. Harry Moultrie from the National Institute of Communicable Diseases presented today and really showed that testing levels, at least for TB, have now gone above what they were in 2019. Um, the impact on treatment uh, we feel is slightly less. We feel that the, the clinics have tried really hard to keep people on treatment, although there has been an impact on people staying on treatment. 
and um, remaining on their therapy, on their regimes through this long treatment period that is a TB treatment period. Um, but the, the largest impact we think is on um, people being tested for TB and we now are making a recovery. Um, what we are, as I've said, um, you know, COVID also brought in new technologies, new ideas, new ways of thinking, and we're looking at some of those already being implemented, and we're looking at a, a like a great response following this conference. You know, with you know people having the knowledge of what's available and being able to uh, put them in action in health facilities and throughout communities in South Africa. There's always been a concern, of course, of uh, uh, drug-resistant strains of uh, TB. Uh, is that a major issue for us? Is that something that we're managing? Well, drug-resistant TB will always be, uh, you know, has always been a problem in South Africa. We have, um, over the years, have had approximately 10,000 drug-resistant patients per year. Um, this has been declining, and the last few years are seeing um, reductions to around 6,000 per year. And this seems to have stabilized over the last two years. So we are hoping that, um, you know, despite all the disruptions of COVID-19, that we are not seeing at the moment um, any indication that the drug-resistant TB cases have increased. Um, what we have been able to do during this time period as well is try some new regimens for drug-resistant TB. Um, and in fact, South Africa uh, tried the nine-month oral regimen, which is a nine-month treatment rather than an 18-month treatment for drug-resistant TB. And that has led to um, international guidelines being changed throughout the world to make available this nine-month regimen due to the good response that we were able to show in South Africa. So um, treatments are getting better. Now, there's now a six-month regimen on the horizon for drug-resistant TB. So we're hoping that with that, we, as we're able to increase treatment success for drug-resistant TB, we will then reduce uh, the transmission that can take place and so reduce the numbers even further. So um, we feel that we are getting on top of it. It's not yet completely under control, but we're getting on top of drug-resistant TB. Professor Sharambulis, we're going to leave it there for today, mm -hmm. but I'd love to chat to you again after the conference just to discuss the outcomes and uh, what you've decided as a way forward. Perhaps we'll do this again, uh, maybe early next week. I'm very happy to do that with you, Peter. Thanks very All much. Right. Thank you so much indeed. That's uh, Professor Salome Sharambulis, who's the Chief Scientific Officer at the Aram Institute. The TV conference taking place at the moment uh, in Durban that was nearly threatened with uh, being derailed by uh, key players uh, pulling out, but they soldiered on and they said we must still do the work. We'll have an update uh, at the end of that conference for sure. Now, continued investments uh, have seen uh, in various sectors of the country's